Good morning, this is Pastor Ezekiel Johnson of Great Commission Pentecostal Church, and I have a word of encouragement. This uh, morning, I want to dispel a notion um, that has become a doctrine in and for many in Christendom, but I want to dispel it with Scripture, of course, but also the logic of, you know, the erroneous nature of, of such a message. And the message or the doctrine or the belief that I'm talking about is once saved, always saved. Now, in a society like ours that's full of hopeful dreams and, and uh, fairy tales and things of that nature where dreams uh, and uh, encapsulating everything in a quick sound bite is kind of what we are used to. We want to know exactly what I need to do. That's it. That's all. I don't want to do anything extra. Just the bare minimum. Uh, th that these these kind of things promote such a doctrine, such a mentality, that for someone to believe that once I'm saved, once I've done what it takes to be saved, I'm saved forever, and no matter what I do, I'm okay. That runs totally against the concept of what Jesus established and what the Word of God says. And certainly, it's not a righteous concept because, you know, think about what Jesus, you know, what the Bible says about the heart of man. He says about man, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And when you get saved, you don't, your heart doesn't change in that sense that it, you no longer have control over it. You still have control. You're still making choices. Now, mind you, when you have the Spirit of God on the inside, your conscience is illuminated, so you're making choices, but at the same time, the influence of God's Spirit is there to help you make the right choices. But at the same time, you still have the ability to make your own decisions, to make your own choices. The Bible he wouldn't even say things such as this. Make your calling an election sure. In other words, yes, God's called you. Yes, you have done what it takes to be saved. But at the same time, your salvation is on an everyday basis. Some people like to equate this with great grace and they conflate this whole understanding by saying that, well, God has paid the price. You know, when Jesus came, he paid the price. Therefore, whatever I do, it's already paid for. So I can do what I want to do. It doesn't quite work that way. You're being disingenuous to the truth and to God, really, because what the way it works is this. God tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Why would you have to fear? Why would you tremble when working out your own salvation when he's already paid the price and there's nothing you have to do, nothing you have to fear? There's a little bit more to it. I want to bring out this scripture for your consideration. In 1 Corinthians 6, in verse number 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So the word inherit, inherent in the word inherit, is the fact that there is some kind of familial relationship. And so being that there is a family relationship, inheritance would mean that something is going to be bestowed to you upon, you know, uh, the death of another. Inheritance of heaven, it happens when we die, when we leave this life, and then we face judgment, and then, of course, we're rewarded with heaven. Now, he says, know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit. The only people that would be in line to inherit anything from God would be people that are saved. And that makes, that makes sense. It stands to reason because the people that he's talking to are people that are in church. Remember, this was written to the church at Corinth. Paul was writing this letter to a church that's already established. And he was reminding them or really informing them in some ways that the unrighteous will not enter the kingdom of heaven. They're not going to inherit and then he goes on to give a list of the fornicators, idolaters, and a, a list of different unrighteous acts that people do and lifestyles that they live.
that are so defined and so categorized. And he says, these folks are not going to enter. Now, they could have been saved. They could have been baptized in Jesus' name, filled with God's spirit. But if the lifestyle that they're living thereafter is not reflective of the spirit of God controlling them, then they're not going to inherit what God has in store for his saints, people that are. What I'm saying to you is that there is a fight, there is a struggle, there is a battle that we are to fight. Some people have made that battle so easy by saying, oh, don't worry, you're, you're fighting, it. you don't have to do that, God's already paid it. Yes, he has paid it, but you have got to do something too. Jesus says every single day you have to pick up your cross and follow him. That doesn't mean a picnic through life where you have no responsibility over keeping yourself from sin. It's quite the opposite. We have a responsibility to understand what he's done, what he requires of us, and to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. He says to him that knows to do good, this is very general and very broad, and it covers many, many categories. But him that knows to do good and does it not, to him it is sin. And so God is not about having immature people, immature children. He's about having mature children that take on the harness of responsibility, understanding that I have to live my life different because of the price, because of whose I am. It calls for me living my life up to a certain level. Hey, some things are hard. Some things are difficult. But we have him. After we've been saved, we can go to him when we've sinned. He doesn't, you know, trash us or, or rebuke us to the point that he throws us aside never to be restored. Quite the opposite. He says that after we've been saved, if we cast our cares upon him, he cares. So he, he gives us a, a way out. He says, confess your, your sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is, of course, after you're saved. But that is what he offers. But he certainly does not say and does not imply in any way that you can do whatever you want, live however you want after you've been saved, and you're always going to be saved. That's a huge mistake. In doctrine. It's erroneous and it has led many, many people to a lifestyle where they think it's all covered and they can do whatever they want to do. It doesn't work that way. Maturity in God isn't just maturity for the sake of you becoming a better person just so everybody can look at you and say you're a good person. No, it's about your salvation. And this is why that scripture is very clear. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling in light of the teaching, in light of what the word of God says, in light of the things that God requires and demands of us, it's up to us to take on what God has given us to do and make sure our calling is an election sure. This is Pastor Johnson saying have a great day and let's stay in the book.